Welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles, an emergency physician. Today we're going to talk about procedural sedation in the emergency department. Procedural sedation is common in all emergency departments and I'd like to present a framework to do it safely and humanely. Put yourself in the ED on a Saturday afternoon and a man presents with an obvious fractured and dislocated ankle that needs to be relocated urgently. Now, what you're going to see in a minute is what I would not advise, not because it won't work, but basically because it's inhumane. In other words, this is going to really hurt, even for those of us just watching. Nice and relaxed, Gary, doing really well. It really is the only way to save Gary's foot. Okay, so what do you need to organise to do the procedure more humanely and safely every time? You need space, staff and stuff. So let's go through this in greater detail. So space. You need an appropriate physical space that's large enough for procedure and has cardiorespiratory monitoring and resuscitation equipment. In most departments this is the resuscitation room. However, some departments have dedicated properly equipped procedure rooms. Staff. Even though the relocation should be relatively quick, you'll need a number of staff. The Emergency Care Institute guidelines recommend a minimum of three staff. Now, in this case, because of the requirement for two people to do the reduction in plastering, four staff would be a minimum. You'll need one person to deliver the drug chosen for sedation. Another is needed to control the airway and monitor the cardiorespiratory status of the patient. Then, to do the actual procedure of ankle relocation, you require two more staff. This will be a minimum for the procedure. And in reality, you'll probably require an additional nurse to do the documentation. Stuff. Stuff is what you will use or may use. Use an A, B, C, D, E mnemonic to remind yourself. So A, airway equipment. Remember with the sedation you're going to do, it'll be brief, probably five to 10 minutes. And the drugs you'll use might mean you need to support the airway and perhaps use airway adjuncts. But you should always check your laryngoscope and ETTs just for completion's sake, but you shouldn't require them. The boots mnemonic will also be helpful to uh, predict a patient who may be difficult to bag. B, breathing. You'll need nasal prongs with end tidal CO2 for pre-oxygenation along with a Hudson mask. Good pre-oxygenation before the procedure buys you time if there's any hypoventilation or apnea. Personally, I give the patient nasal prongs at four litres per minute for 10 minutes under their Hudson mask, which is at six litres per minute, before the commencement of the sedation. Then, as they lose consciousness, increase the nasal prongs to 15 litres per minute. Have a bag valve mask ready, but you're unlikely to require it. C. Circulation. Have two IV lines and hang a litre of fluid in case you need a fluid bolus. D. D is drugs and documentation. Let's do documentation first. You need informed consent and documentation during the procedure. Here's an example of a sedation documentation form. Also, the patient will often require a fact sheet after the procedure if they're going to be discharged. Much like this one. Okay, on to drugs. Well, I'm not here to preach on a clinician's choice of drugs of sedation. The principle is you should have deep enough sedation along with analgesia for the procedure and that the drugs are rapid onset and offset. Also, very importantly, you need to feel comfortable with using that drug. So briefly, here are some options as I see them. This is just a quick overview. One overriding principle is that the fewer drugs you use, the fewer side effects you will accumulate. Ketamine, special case, used intravenously. It's dose-dependent analgesia through to dissociated anesthesia. One of the reasons it's liked both here and in resource-limited settings is that it doesn't tend to cause the hypotension, or importantly, the respiratory depression, which you commonly see in other agents. And it works. Propofol, the milk of human kindness. Rapid onset and offset. You can titrate your desired dose in less than a minute and it lasts only about five to 10 minutes. But expect hypotension and respiratory depression. And of course, remember, it doesn't have any analgesic qualities. Ketafol, a one-to-one -one mixture of ketamine and propofol in the same 20 mil syringe, which gives you 10 milligrams per mil of both drugs. 
you titrate up the dose and usually give about mm, half a milligram per kilogram IV. So for an 80 kilo, 30 year old man, you might expect to give about 40 milligrams of each, which is about four mils. But do it slowly and add more if you require it. The judgment is out on Ketafol a bit at the moment, but I found it useful and theoretically you can use lower doses of both, so therefore decrease their dose related side effects. Fentanyl, the thinking clinician's narcotic. It's short acting, about 30 or so minutes with minimal hypotension and less sedating than other narcotics. Generally it's used as an adjunct for analgesia and deep sedation. 100 micrograms is equivalent to about 10 milligrams of morphine. Finally, midazolam, a short-acting benzodiazepine with no analgesic properties. It will give you sedation with hypotension and respiratory depression. The upside is they won't remember the pain or your face, as you can see in this clip below. As well as morphine, Dean's being given midazolam, which doesn't stop him feeling pain, but helps him forget it. Sedates him to the point that he can't remember stuff, yeah. but he's still going to have a response to the pain of yeah. what we're doing, but he's just not going to remember it. Dean's broken his tibia and fibula bones. Oh, well done. Oh, oh. Well done, that's it. It's all done. He's done, Dean. He's done. He's done. Really well. But bizarrely, due to the drugs, he has absolutely no memory of the manoeuvre. Well, eventually, for a Yeah, it's all been done. It's all done. Okay. I'll come and talk to you later. Okay. Right, yeah. Yes, they've done it before we got here. Straight into your ankle. I didn't know that. Finally, on to E, the equipment. Equipment for the specific procedure. So in the case of an ankle relocation, you need to have the plaster for the back slab and stirrup cut, bandages open, and rolls delineated. The two people for the procedure must be ready to start when the patient is adequately sedated. What is required will of course vary for a relocation of an ankle compared to uh, cardioversion, but the principle is the same. Well, I think that'll just about do for safe procedural sedation in adults in the emergency department in one coffee. Just remember, space, staff, stuff. Stay well, hope to see you next time. Cheers. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful, I